Time now for our weekly news segment. We got to get Tony before we lose him. I know he's limited on time. Hey, Tony. You're muted. You are muted. Yep. Okay. Hey. Hey, so guys. Good. You? Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, I guess uh, go ahead and run through things and... Well, maybe we uh, we could we could give our comments at the end as as opposed to commenting as you go. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. Um, let me just do this. Okay. So um, the first thing is our Bitcoin is okay. Um, so there's a post from Luke um, which said the freedom only comes from bringing down the state. At this stage today in 2023, Bitcoin is the best chance we have to separate money from state. Eight years ago, XMR had a higher probability to do so, but network effect, adoption, and game theory have shifted the probabilities much further in Bitcoin's favor, he says. Then the next tweet. <laughs> are you are you showing screen? I'm not seeing your screen. Oh, no. Uh... Yeah, try to get your screen up there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Sweet. There we okay, go. That's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what you're talking about. Yeah. This guy. Yes. Uh, oh yeah. So he's, now, like, he's like the ult, ultimate Monero Maxi. And now, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Ex explain what happened here this week. So uh, he talked about Bitcoin and then he tweeted, please help Shiva Wallet just stole a thousand dollars from my girlfriend. Today they canceled a thousand dollar transaction for no reason and won't return the funds. Anyone in El Salvador able to help? Then the next one. Uh, the next tweet, he says, glad to update everyone that this issue has been resolved and funds have been unfrozen. The funds were reportedly frozen due to AML regulations and saying that Chivo is still doing a great job in El Salvador. Um, and then below, Untraceable said that apparently this happens quite often in El Salvador and uh, Bitcoin Beach um, uh, posted this week, a local carpenter we know had his wallet frozen for $1,000 transactions. They asked him to prove the origin of funds and so it's not it's not the first time that it happens and um it's not it's not a good thing at all um for your yeah i think it's just kind of exposing the hypocrisy like they these guys are like literally one moment talking about how you know uh bitcoin is is liberating the world and how great it is to see the adoption in el salvador and then a moment later talking about how chivo wallet is basically taking people's funds right um or not allowing people to transact so there's just like a lot of hypocrisy there a lot of confusion they don't seem to really uh I, i'm just i'm just hearing double speak right and so look look at the top part it says <laughs> is the best chance we have to separate the money from the state. And then you go down, funds were reportedly frozen due right. to AML yeah, regulations. That is. That's, that's so funny. And then, and then the conclusion, I'm, I'm not, I'm in saying that Chivo is still doing a great job in El Salvador. It's um, like, what is so it's going like, on in this As long as you build CBDC on Bitcoin lightning rails, it's totally fine, guys. Yeah. To totally we, we've, had, we've had this guy jump in uh monero spaces before he's of the of the character and I, I'm, I'm not trying to you know be a jerk to him but he's he's of the character that bitcoin is fungible right bitcoin is private and then it's it just it's doesn't fungible but it was frozen because of aml regulations yeah. like yes. uh, what <laughs> so that, that that was interesting to watch this week for a form of money that should give you freedom freedom you should be able to do whatever you want and not have your money frozen it's just essentially like a cbdc essentially in some yeah we, we shouldn't be promoting the adoption of chivo wallet which is really at the end of the day no different than a, pay, a paypal or perhaps even worse right i had kind which of a long thread um sorry to interrupt i had kind of a long thread with um kind of a maxi bro and he pointed out that Chivo might not necessarily be exactly synonymous with a wallet. He said it's more like a payment app. Um, I think at the end of the conversation, he he did kind of move me a little bit um, to the to the position that Chivo is kind of like an it's a payment app, but it's also a Lightning wallet that you operate on behalf of the government. Because when you send funds into Chivo, it's actually the government holding those funds. So all the people in El Salvador that receive quote unquote Lightning funds 
they're actually like operating a lightning wallet on behalf of the El Salvadorian government to receive those funds on their behalf, and they can only access them uh, with the permission of El Salvador. So it's kind of like this like weird unholy hybrid. Uh, anyway, that, that was <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe oh. right? Isn't that bad? I don't see any good in that though. What like how how is that a step <laughs> forward? Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, keep going. Then let's talk about uh, Bitcoin Twitter, um, since we discussed Bitcoin a little bit. So Bitcoin Twitter raging as Bitcoin wallet six Monero based privacy boost. Uh, this is interesting. So Samurai Wallet is going to implement Bitcoin to Monero atomic swaps. And there's been people from the um, laser eye community that uh, have tweeted such as played licking pleb. Are we canceling Samurai for this or and Samurai tweeted gatekeep all you want. We'll build those right through um you like with with unapologetic done since day one cross chain atomic swaps between bitcoin and xmr are here we've been hard at work to make it a reality wipe the tears from your delicate little <laughs> laser eyes um then they also tweeted that when we first announced that we were working on this important technology the bumbling influencer idiots with their gaggle of acolytes all together with an iq of 47 responded exactly as you would expect you can read about it on and our response here no one influences our roadmap but us. No one will bully us into submission. You're either along for the ride or you aren't. If you want off the ride, you better jump because we're not slowing down for you. It's as simple as that. Um, so that's that's interesting. Of course, it's not the whole Bitcoin community that went on, on Samurai. Um, but the response is interesting. And it's good that when they have a vision, that they keep going with it. And that they don't stop for certain people. So it's uh, it's based. They're grounded in reality. Yeah. Right. So, so the typical laser-eyed uh, Bitcoin user is for something like a Chivo wallet that is allowing the El Salvadoran government to essentially censor transactions, but they're against something like Samurai wallet because it's implemented Monero atomic swaps. So it's the hypocrisy just this reminds me of how they treat Seth for privacy too. It, you know, like a guy who's just actively like helping the bitcoin community in so many ways and they're just always like always just on his ass like yeah so yeah so monero is gonna be on um on the samurai wallet for atomic swaps uh then let's discuss paypal because we talked about it a little bit before um, so PayPal is going to unveil a new stable coin called PayPal USD. It's designed for payments and is backed by highly liquid and secure assets. Starting today and rolling out in the next few weeks, you'll be able to buy, sell, hold, and transfer PYUSD. Then we have a post from Bitcoin Culture. PayPal has been known to randomly freeze accounts and hold people's money hostage. It's all over the internet. We know this. We talked about it in previous episodes. Their newly launched PayPal USD stablecoin features a built-in asset protection function which can erase your balance in two transactions. One, freeze, or two, wipe frozen address. In smart contract security, it's called a centralization attack vector. Yeah, it might be adoption, but it ain't Bitcoin. Now your key is not your crypto. And uh, I'm still not sure why people are still using PayPal, because I'm not sure if they still uh, have this implemented. But um, if you say something that is against their policy, they can subtract, I think, $2,300 from your account. And this is per... Uh, thing that you might have done. So if you said two things or two actions that are against the policy, that's you know forty six hundred dollars essentially. Um, so that's that's interesting. Uh, then I'm not going to talk about this much, but FTX Sam Bankman and Fried is going to jail, um, which is going to be on October second. And finally. <laughs> Um, then we have a big announcement. So we have Kickwald on F-Droid. And, um, oops, one second. Chila tweeted, I just want to say that Graphene OS has done such an amazing job at creating a user-friendly mobile OS that all my normie friends enjoy it. In my honest opinion, Privacy Tech officially arrived and now having Cake and another user-friendly app in F-Droid is going to make a huge difference. Uh, so that's really good news as well. Awesome. I, I can now um, download Cake on my D Google phone. That's yeah. Right. That's cool. But I'm not sure. Someone made this table. Is this for you, dog? Or it's yes. really cool. 
Yes. Oh, that's it, really cool. That's so awesome. Yeah, the other side's even cooler. Uh, he was only showing the bottom, but he's. I, I met him at MoneroCon, and he's handcrafting this for me. He lives in. I guess I don't want to give out away his exact location, but somewhere in Eastern Europe, and he'll be shipping me this table. Oh, wow. So for the people watching on Twitter, it's a table, but the legs are in, in the, uh, painted in black, and they have the M. From the Monero. Monero. Yeah, the, the other side is beautiful. He's, he did a really good job. That's really cool. That's that's really nice. All right, now it's wow narrow, but when you turn it to the right side, it'll be Monero. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then we have the Monero ATM project. So this is a do-it-yourself automated teller machine that runs free software. And we actually had uh, an interview with them. Uh, but essentially, they teach you how to make a Monero ATM project, which is really, really cool. So uh, I saw this on Reddit. I know we talked about this in the past, and we also have an interview on that. But uh, if you go on atm.monero.is, uh, then you can see it for yourself and build your own Monero ATM uh, project. Yeah, this is this is very cool. I I, I love their their little Monero ATM box. But I, I, <laughs> until you run out of Monero, because that's what always happens. <laughs> well, what what yeah? What, what's well? What's cool about this is the way they're doing it. Is it's um the the price of Monero will 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 change based on how much cash is at hand in the box in the ATM. That's really interesting. And that's yeah, the that's what we did up here, but the problem is no matter how high the price of Monero goes, you always run out. Every <laughs> it's, it, it, I mean, you can get double. It doesn't matter. They still just, you're out of Monero every time. That's why we stopped building. We were going to build one of these, remember, Doug? But we just don't even bother because we can never even keep enough Monero on hand. That is crazy. Uh, if you want to build it, it costs between 200 to 400 euros. So it's not that expensive to build also. Very cool. I didn't even know about this website. This is awesome. Yeah. It's super awesome. It's really so. cool. Uh, then quick mention, Chicago Monero Meetup by Cake Wallet is going to be on November 2nd between 7 and 10 p.m. So if you are in the area, make sure that you go and um, meet up with Cake Wallet in Chicago, downtown. Yeah, it should be very cool. I'm going to try to make it over to that. I don't know if I will be able to, but we'll try. Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. And uh, the last thing, the last three articles that we have are on CBDCs. So last week we had the Digital Rubble um, official logo. I don't think we have, I think the name is just Digital Rubble, but it, we have the Brazilian CBDC uh, name and logo, and it's going to be named the DREX. So now you might be thinking, what does the DREX stand for? Uh, DNR allude to real digital, uh, real digital. D stands for electronic, and the X conveys the idea of modernity and connection, the use of distributed ledger technology. Uh, this is the logo, Drex, and then we have two pointing arrows uh, to the right side. One is blue as the whole uh, logo, and one is green, signaling um, the transaction completed the message. Uh, and it's made by Banco Central do Brasil. So CBDCs, again, are coming. We are now getting official names, official logos. We have in Brazil, we have it in in uh, Russia as well. So for the people that still think that they're not coming, there you have it. Um, then let's actually talk about, talk, let's talk about this first. A Japanese startup to use stable coins and CBDC to link Asian countries. Suramitsu is developing a cross-border payment system that uses Cambodia's CBDC and targets um, Japan, India, China, and Southeast Asia. So it's a lot of countries in, in Asia. But uh, so the Japanese blockchain startup Soramitsu is exploring new central bank digital currency applications uh, with a new project on the cross-border payment system for Asian uh, countries. Soramitsu will deploy Cambodia's CBDC and fiat pegged stable coins as part of its new payment system, targeting countries like India, China, and Japan, and regions like Southeast um, Asia. Uh, then they say, generally, this project is for regulated stablecoins in Japan and other countries, as well as uh, central bank digital currencies. And they also mentioned that, for example, if a Thai user wants to purchase something from a Japanese e-commerce site, the report noted the payment will be sent as a dollar-denominated Bakong and converted to yen to a yen-denominated stablecoin. So CBDCs are coming in fruition in Brazil. 
So in South America, the coming infrusion is in Eastern Europe with Russia and all over um, all over uh, Asia as well. So um, yeah, and then we have um, Canada. So Bank of Canada ran, I think, like a report, and they said that Canadians have weak incentives to use a CBDC, essentially because they have little trouble accessing financial services. Most of them um, have a bank account. They don't struggle. They don't want to go to so something else. Uh, there are not as many unbanked people as in other countries. So the report said that 98% of Canadian adults have a bank account, 87% also have a credit card, and 90% of rural and urban households combined can access highly high quality internet. Um, then they also mentioned that, however, it found that replacing cash with digital loonies would also mean tech-averse Canadians would have fewer payment options, while cash-dependent Canadians would find themselves unable to make the most uh, common uh, payments. The potentially low uptake of a CBDC would also lead to merchants unlikely to want to accept one, which would further diminish its usefulness. Our latest survey uh, from Bank of Canada results shown that 92% of merchants have no plans to go cashless, and they also say that cash is still king. So um, now this might mean that Canada won't have a CBDC, just like in the US, they're saying that we may have a CBDC or not, but they're just doing research. But if Russia has its CBDC, Brazil has its own CBDC, China and all these countries in Asia, and countries are competitive, they want to stay on top of, of um, every single sector. Canada is eventually is going to have a CBDC, they're going to make it, um, they're going to incentivize people to hop on the Canadian uh, CBDC, same in the US and same all over the the world so eventually yeah we we're gonna have cbdc's all over the place and uh, it's going to be an interesting world by then and also i think let me see if i can find um there was the um, one second there was a video of joe rogan and i don't know why i don't have it up here but it's joe rogan and uh post malone oh yeah i saw this that one is really good as well let me see if i can find it uh, I thought that I had it up here. No, maybe if I can look it up. Let's do Rogan and Rogan and post loan CBC. Okay, and this is the last thing that I want to mention. I think it was a Twitter link or yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this this one. Can you guys hear it? No. Yeah? No, no sound. Oh no. Yeah, oh, no. Okay. Um you send a link to me? Yeah. You send a link. All right. Uh tsh, tsh, tsh. anybody anybody got any other input into this week's news? Mm, I see a lot of people in the chat talking about the El Salvador Chivo thing. Yeah, I I wonder if he would have had the swift resolution that he got if he wasn't in the public eye was the first thing that came to mind. And then you're talking about a country full of unbanked people that are trying to use crypto for its privacy advantages, all being on a government wallet. Like the whole thing, that, there is no way that it hasn't occurred to these people how absolutely ridiculous the system actually is. Andrea says the good aspect of El Salvador BTC adoption is just having a country using a unit of account that doesn't depend on the local government. I don't think El Salvador had its own currency. I think it was always dependent on the US dollar. Right. It's dependent on the dollar. Yeah, for like 30 years, I think, at least. Yeah. Mm, all right. Yeah, play play that video if you just can. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, well, I don't know. Oh, it was muted there. There we go. It's, um, digital currency that they're working No on. fucking way. No way. That's what I think. I think that's checkmate. That's game over. That is fucking checkmate. Because if they apply that to a social credit score, if they decide somehow or another that you need some social credit score system and it's for the benefit of society, and they outline that they can you know, track your behavior and your tweets and all your things, and you get a, a score... And if you're already scores, doing that, they they just haven't released the fucking report. 
report cards. Well, they, they don't have the kind they of freedom sent that the they like. They didn't send the report cards home to the parents yet. Right. Yeah, so Joe Rogan is asking about CBDCs. Pretty cool, though. Mainstream mainstream is, is – they're on it. People are hearing it. I'm sure they'll give him a big pile of money and his opinion will just suddenly change. I don't know where we'll see. <laughs> Is Joe Rogan? Rogan a gold bug? Like he doesn't want to have any crypto people on his podcast because he doesn't want to admit he's a gold bug because of the digital surveillance. You think that's what's going on? Yeah, I see I see all the Bitcoiners complaining. Like, why isn't he talking about Bitcoin? Well, like, He's let him talk about whatever he wants. No, but it's it's I don't know. It's he has talked about Bitcoin. He's had, he's had Andreas. He had Andreas Antonopoulos on like years ago. Um, I don't know. Next step, Monero. Right. Why is no Joe Rogan? Like, just gotta contact like a family member or something. I wanted to throw in. I don't know how many people, but during the the PayPal part of the news segment there. Um, it, so recently Tesla had their DRM, their digital rights management by violated by somebody finding a hack to a different DRM for the AMD management engines, which is basically like the, the, the final boss, the black box of technology <laughs> right now is it? And somebody found a workaround through the met the DRM at the AMD processor level to get around the DRM for Tesla's. So you can unlock the speed boost, you can unlock the battery, you can unlock like the heated seats and all the other stuff that you have to pay a subscription for. And so somebody in absolute super giga Chad mode, just like wiped the floor with all of these proprietary garbage stuff by using them against each other. And with PayPal, it's the same thing where like all of your payment systems and all of your money is like behind walls upon walls of, and they were supposed to like get people into the world of the unbanked over to the world of the banked. And now like they, they've like hijacked the banking system the same way that somebody used AMD to hijack the Teslas. It's like the whole situation is such well, so a they, they literally art. jailbroke a Tesla using, um, there's a bug in, uh, an exploit in, because uh, this is a custom made AMD chip for Tesla that has its own, some of its own components. Uh, but they were able to jailbreak it basically to enable all those paywalled features <laughs> that normally cost an exorbitant amount. You know, the car's already expensive and you got to pay extra for all this extra stuff. Basically, they were able to jailbreak it just like you could jailbreak an iPhone. You know, they did that to their Tesla, uh, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty cool. My understanding is that they they can't stop it. Like, it's a hardware problem. So there's no update oh, yeah. that they yep. can make to, to prevent it. Yeah, and you some of these things have access that. to the device, and you need the keys in order to fix the hack. So it, oh you, you would have to recall every Tesla. You'd have to change all of the components. Then you'd have to like work through all of the new bugs that come out of having a different computer for everything. It, you'd basically have to buy a new Tesla if you were a Tesla in order to fix the problem. That means features that require microtransactions, like the heated steering wheel. Imagine paying for your heated steering wheel, footwell lights, or even $2,000 acceleration boost could be turned off for free or turned on for free via the heck. So imagine having to pay extra money just to get all the horsepower of your car, right? So that's ridiculous. And so these people just went out of the way and like, nope, we're not paying for any of that. It's already there. The hardware's there. They've just locked us out via this stupid software. Uh, so they, they went around that. Yeah, it really... Just Go ahead, Doug. Sorry. I was just going to say, it just shows you, you know, what they potentially can do too, right? When governments want to start punishing people in certain ways, uh, if they have complete control of your car, right? So it's not just paying a little extra money for a heated seat, but it's maybe like you're not allowed to essentially drive to certain places or, you know, get on certain roads, restricting your where, where you can go. Uh, pretty scary. But they pretty actually, cool wasn't it only in like... Jailbreak. I think it was in like 2014, DARPA got caught killing a journalist by hijacking his car. I can't even remember who it was now, but he was a uh, he was like one of the last good reporters for Rolling Stone. And he was in the middle of like this big drug deal contract between some general and a whole bunch of uh, 
cartels and he was like un he was unraveling all of this human trafficking stuff and then his car just decided to go 130 miles an hour into a tree <laughs> so the, the reason why this is stuck. irreversible oh sorry buddy oh no i just said the the accelerator got stuck go ahead the reason why it's irreversible is actually a little bit scary. Um, if you if you think about it, it's because uh, it they're not attacking like Alaskanon said they're attacking part of the AMD processor, not like any of the Tesla software itself, uh, and that's why it's irreversible because it's a bug with the platform security processor or the PSP that exists on AMD processors. And this PSP is a, a dedicated ARM chip that has control over the rest of the processor itself. It's the one that is the first part to boot when you turn on the computer, and it has a bunch of security features that it can do like it provides virtualization services um it provides uh like uh, a lot of encryption stuff and they were able to attack that uh for the tesla in order to jailbreak that but if you think about it this could also be used potentially in malicious ways especially considering the fact that the car is you know constantly connected to the internet uh and so is is that like TPM for AMD or is it? A little yeah, bit more so the PSP has that? an FTPM built in, so it kind of includes that, uh, but it does a lot more than just provides a TPM. Uh, similar to, I'm sure a lot of people have heard about the Intel ME or the Intel management engine. It's very similar to that. Um, but those those little components, while they provide a lot of features, uh, they also they, they can be exploited, um, especially considering the fact that they, they have their own network stack. Uh, and so they can use network by themselves without the computer even being on. Uh, so Jesus. something to think about. These, these new cars definitely. Don't, don't forget cool, they but... can turn the computer on. They can turn the microphone and camera on and they can make it appear as though it's off the entire time, too. Well, the scope of access depends on the exact implementation. Like I think Intel's is probably uh, a bit more dangerous than AMD's, uh, but they're both. Uh, and they're both black boxes too. That's the biggest concern is that, yeah, you've got these little chips here that are doing a lot of things that, you know, in terms of security, if you look at how they work, uh, can be very good, but they're black boxes. Uh, it's, they run their own proprietary version of like Linux or Minix or whatever. So and let's keep in mind the same oligarchy behind PayPal that is taking over the banking institution at like the individual layer. And they also have people getting into a greater and greater number of cars with all of these hackable issues. On top of that, we just had a story the other day about Amazon locking people out of their own house because they said like unapproved words. And so like you have a company that has constant live feed through your phone, through your car, through your house, through your banking apps to everything that you're doing. And on top of that, they can lock you out of your car or steer it or control it. They always know your location. And then on top of that, they can freeze your bank accounts. And it's, it's just, I mean, like, anyone who is thinking of like, oh, you know, Tesla is, you know, if you think Elon Musk is like the good guy and he's like, you know, hashtag our guy or whatever, it's like, it doesn't even matter if he was like an absolute saint, what he's building. You, you, like it, it would only take one sophisticated hacker to not just ruin your life, but end your life. It, and they might even get away with it without anyone ever knowing that, that they even did it. If you did it in such a plausible way as to like drive off a bridge under, you know, on an icy road, all they'd have to do is be patient and they could get away with just murking you. Well, I guess Are you guys are aware that uh, it's crazy. Sorry. Go ahead, buddy. No, you go ahead. In San Francisco and a few other California cities, they are releasing driverless cars now, like driverless taxi service. I think it's Cruise and Waymo are the companies that are approved. Um, I, th there's an opportunity here to dunk on Tesla, be like, well, you didn't get approved, and where's your license to operate driverless cars? But um, everything that Alaska just said is is extremely poignant. Like they can murder journalists, they can murder anyone that they that they want to. And oh, by the way, black hat hackers can get into your car um, if they didn't quite perfectly uh, prevent anyone from accessing the TPM or whatever hardware, whatever software implementation prevents people from getting into that. And into that even system. someone like me who drives a car older than me, no matter what car it is, and like uses a graphene phone, if I turn my cellular network service on, 
somebody could triangulate my location because of a public phone number that I have to use for certain work environment. And they could just like drive a Tesla into me, whether or not I've secured all of my devices. And at some point people have to think about like, I mean, lucky for me, I'm usually in a semi if I'm working, but like the, the thing is, is you're everybody allowing this to happen is putting themselves whether or not their 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 security model is absolutely amazing